hi so today i want to talk about right and wrong good and bad evil what do the what do these things even mean in our modern world so all of our morals and ethics come from ever since we were babies we were taught what is the right thing to do by our mom and everyone around us by the culture in general and this sort of really normal way of human beings acquiring values is to just absorb everything around them and then we grow up and we have absorbed all of the values we can and then we have this these notions of what we think is right and wrong of course you and i know that nothing is good or bad everything is relative in the grand scheme of things nothing really matters and that was a, a source of great distress for me when i was a depressed teenager along with the fact that there is no right or wrong good or good or evil it's always relative and subjective uh, to us human beings it's always funny to me when i see people trying to argue that some things are objectively bad or objectively good when that is just pure nonsense if you would have met an alien um, just try to explain to the, to the alien in simple terms why killing someone is bad of course you could come up with some stuff i could come up with some stuff okay so what you're doing if you're killing someone is you're taking away their potential for positive future experiences and why we think it's bad is because we think that positive future experiences are good so when you withhold positive future experiences from someone then that would be bad it would be bad to prevent someone from potentially feeling good that makes sense but then there is a question why are good feelings good and a lot of these things with philosophy it can get really silly uh, but it's often really small simple questions that have profound deeper meaning in them i think everything about our society should be questioned uh, we should not take things for granted and indeed we should not take ethics and morality for granted some things are inbuilt in us at least it feels that way it has always been the case that it's not good to kill a baby uh, it has always been the case that if you have a tribe and people are gathering food and uh, everyone's contributing then it's bad for you to not contribute it's bad for you to rape and torture the people that do contribute. Why is it bad to kill a baby? And again, it's a point where you can laugh. Of course, it's bad to kill a baby. But why? Uh, again, we can go back to the denial of positive future experiences. If we were to kill a baby, then we would deny this baby the possibility of future positive experiences. But this is just reasoning after the fact. What really happened is that we are beings evolved by natural selection and one of our innate really strong drives is to keep our species going and especially our own personal offspring to take care of that and make sure that our DNA is passed on and when someone prevents you from passing on your DNA that's bad that is trouble and so that is a really obvious explanation so that would happen no matter what uh, we would object to anyone killing our baby what explanation we give after that uh, is another story altogether we can have all kinds of stories of why it's bad to kill a baby but when it comes down to it truly what an alien being would see is that we would just reason uh, from our evolutionary upbringing uh, because you know we are just dna and dna wants to keep going it's it's it blows my mind when i grasp grasp the thought that we are just dna that's been separating and multiplying for hundreds of millions of years from the first primordial oceans this weird chemical soup where just by random accident some molecules came together and one of these molecules was good at making copies of itself that's it the weirdest thing just a molecule that's good at making copies of itself and of course the molecules that are best at making copies of themselves they will make more copies of themselves leaving to the beginning of natural selection and evolution where the best of making copies will make more copies and they will make more copies to this point where we are now where we are highly specialized diverse interesting machines but still at the core we are for making copies and and it's interesting to think how this drive how all of our technology everything ultimately is still doing exactly what our genes want we are still doing exactly what our dna wants we are thinking of even complex ways of keeping ourselves alive some dude wants to build a human colony on mars 
And it's funny to think that all of that still comes from that really strong instinct deep down in us that we need to make copies of ourselves and, and we need this thing to go on. But fascinating to think how random it is. And now our brains have sort of hijacked evolution. I have thought about it before. And one way of thinking about it is we have sort of gone against our natural instincts and, and what a genetics wants because we use condoms and uh, all kinds of measures to reduce the population on our planet. But the other side is, of course, that in the bigger picture, we are doing everything we can to keep ourselves alive and keep ourselves going into as distant future as we can. Of course, an alien species coming down to Earth, looking at us, seeing our planet run by corporations, would think, wow, you're not really dedicated to long-term survival, are you? Uh, but no, I'm not really worried about it, because this is just a phase in human his history, human evolution. This is just this teenage era of humanity, where we are still being dumb, and our world is still run on greed, uh, and it comes from scarcity, not having enough stuff. So it's fascinating how so many of these things that are inbuilt in us, as wanting to see a species continue, uh, that we also we have these new brains evolved so we can come up with even better ways of keeping our species going. Imagine just hundreds of millions of years of evolution so some 16 year old dude can think with a brain uh, how to get the girl. Uh, you know, that's the point of life, that's the, <laughs> the point of evolution. And it's interesting to wonder how many of these strong instincts are still in us that drive everything we do. And indeed, all of human culture and life is driven by this really deep and really, really old drives and needs and wants that we have. And they feel purposeful and natural, because indeed, if there was a baby here, uh, I would object to this baby being killed. Uh, I think it would be better if a baby would stay alive. But I couldn't give you a solid reasoning for that. As with many things in the human world, there are things that we feel right and wrong, but we can never ultimately explain objectively why they are right or wrong. We just feel that way. I also wonder how much can we truly ever get away from these basic primal instincts? How much could we ever be free? Well, indeed, we definitely could be free after a technological singularity where technology advances far enough, where we can augment our brains to be thousands of times more intelligent, then we could definitely separate ourselves from our basic primal instincts. But then it's the interesting question of, of course, what does make us human? What does make life meaningful? If you have complete indifference as to if this baby is killed or not, then that would definitely, I, I wouldn't argue with it, it would definitely take away humanity from us. And it's the question of how much of humanity we want to take away. We do want to take away the bad parts. I think we would want to get rid of greed. We would want to get rid of violent tendencies and jealousy and fear and hatred and sadness and depression and anxiety. I think we would want to get rid of those things. But if we take all those things away, how human are we? Then another question, of course, then how human do we want to be? That's the ultimate question that unless something really stupid happens with our civilization, those are the questions that we soon need to answer. How much human do we want to be? Because if we take away all of our base instincts, then how much fun could you have? Well, me as a human being, we cannot possibly comprehend the amount of fun that a being a thousand times smarter could have. We simply cannot comprehend how much fun it would, it would be possible to have. I have no doubt that it would be possible to have tremendous amounts of fun uh, being a thousand times smarter and also, of course, having availability of resources and things to do in the world being a thousand times easier, let's say. But it is a real question. If we take all of these things away, then what is actually left? One philosophical answer would be that consciousness would be left. What would be left is just this feeling of being in the present moment. If we remove the ego entirely, then that would be what is left. And I have felt that experience and had that experience, but I don't know how normal everyday life would be like in that way. I kind of prefer and like 
I'm sure you're with me in here. If you're a human being that enjoys any hobby or fun activity or thing to do, then you're with me on this in thinking that we want to maintain some aspects of our humanity. Just think about the perfect human being. I mean, either everyone is perfect or no one is perfect, but perfect human being in the sense that no mental illnesses, physically healthy and healthy upbringing and can enjoy life. I think that is the beginning point where we need to get to, to then think about what we value about being human. Those are real questions. And of course, there is no one answer. Uh, so I hope this was something interesting. If you have any thoughts, please share them in the comments. And of course, thank you so much for watching and take care.